peripheral vascular artery, peripheral vascular artery. This is a very important thing, very important things, probably very important things to know the anatomy of the artery. There is a central artery and peripheral artery. Central artery, this is when we have yani ascending aorta, aortic artery and thoracic aorta and abdominal aorta. From this, I have a distribution of the blood vessels to the upper limb or lower limb through the subcutaneous artery and axillary artery and the brachial artery. Beside, we have three artery, what we call it, the radial ulnar artery and the osseous artery. And the abdominal aorta, also they have two common iliac artery, two common iliac artery, right common iliac and left common iliac artery, it distributed that one to the pelvic one, we call it internal iliac artery, and it will be commencement that of that one, what we have, what we call it external, external, external iliac artery. When it passes the inguinal ligament, we call it the common femoral artery, the common femoral artery, it will be divided to the profunda femoralis and superficial femoral artery. Superficial femoral artery, it will become the name of the popliteal artery and adductor canal or canal of Hunter. It will become the name of the popliteal artery from popliteal artery and gastrocnemius muscles. It will be divided to three branches, what we call it, the anterior tibial, posterior tibial, and peroneal artery. These are anatomy of the arteries in the lower limb and upper limb. Now our 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 lectures today, our lectures today, because we have two things. Either we have acute arterial disease and the chronic arterial disease. I will give you today a lecture on acute arterial disease. I hope that inshallah on Saturday I finish my lectures on the chronic arterial disease. And beside that, I will be finish my lectures in cardiovascular surgery. I hope that that you uh, will be digested of my lectures. Many thanks for your listening. Now we start. What is a peripheral arterial disease? It is obstruction or maybe angiospastic or maybe traumatic or maybe embolic in type or maybe aneurysmal or maybe a congenital one. Congenital one. Now, we have two types of investigation. Either it will be a general investigation regarding arterial disease or we have a specific one, a general one, a common, we do a complete blood count. This is important to see, this is the name, the patient is anemic or non-anemic. Blood sugar is very important to see the diabetic patient or non-diabetic because a diabetic patient have more liability to have a peripheral vascular disease besides the central artery disease and coronary insult also. And hyperlipidemia, this is either familial or acquired one, it is increase of the risk of atherosclerosis also in peripheral artery, also in the central artery, like coronary artery. Uremic patient also, uremic patient, it will be affected of the endothelial, endothelium of the blood vessels, also affected of that one, it lead to the a problem in the arteries. And this is what you do, a renal, renal function test by urea and serum creatinine, beside the potassium and sodium and the chloride. Also general urine is beside of the uh, blood sugar to see if there is a controlling of diabetic or non-diabetic control. This is by finding a sugar in the urine. Chest X-ray is very important to see the size of the heart, if there is any calcification, if it is a chronic hypertension, it will be see the aortic nickel calcified and also abdominal X-ray, if there is abdominal aortic aneurysm, maybe have a long time of that one, maybe have a calcification, we see a calcification in the abdominal X-ray. ECG is very important to exclude any myocardial insult. Radioisotopes, ventriculography to see a ventricular rejection fraction, this is very important because there is a comorbidity between chronic yani arterial, peripheral arterial disease and central arterial disease. Echo is very important, very important because it is, uh, should be yani, corrected the central one before the peripheral arterial disease.
Specific one, we have many things. Have a Doppler ultrasound, or Doppler imaging, or we have a platysmography. This is platysmography mean a volume change in the volume, the measurement and change in the volume of blood vessels. This is uh, many types of platysmography are in the ocular one or in the abdominal one or in upper limb or in lower limb. Treadmill is very important. And angiography, this is, we injected a contrast material through the artery, uh, through the artery. But now, now, now it is more preferable to do what we call it a DSA, angiogram. DSA means digital subtraction and geography. This is an injected a contract material through the vein. Through the vein. And this is it will be go distribution all the dye, all the blood vessels I included uh, venous and arterial and by the computer you can subtraction what you need apart that you needed to uh, read it. CT scan with contrast or MRI or MRI, yeah, magnetic resonance angiogram or imaging, a CT scan with angiogram is very important now. Yeah, it is combination of angiography with the CT angio. And abdominal ultrasound, it is very important, especially in abdominal aortic aneurysm, to decide the size and the thickness of the wall of the aneurysm, and it, it is the site of it is below the renal artery or above the renal artery. It's very important in the decision of the surgery. Now, what we are regarding of the acute, acute arterial obstruction, this is caused by trauma, embolus, or thrombus. Acute means there is sudden occlusion of the artery, when we have a sudden occlusion of the artery, it would lead to the ischemia. If it is not corrected immediately of this ischemia, it would lead to the infarction, mean a dead tissue, and lead, uh, and unfortunately, to amputation. The most important now we will discuss the embolic the trauma. I will discuss it in the next year, in the fifth year, by the emergency the end topics. In the emergency surgery, we took. Uh, chest trauma and vascular trauma in the next year, inshallah. Now we are concentrated on embolic and the thrombosis. First of all, what is the definition of embolus? Either in vive, in vive or even in a clinical one, in a clinical or fitting one, you should be mentioned for me when I, I told you what is defined for me an embolus. You should be immediately this a foreign body circulating inside the vascular system. A foreign body, foreign body. You don't know what is the type of that foreign body. Maybe, maybe a foreign body, this is a blood clot, or maybe a amniotic fluid, or maybe an air, or maybe a lipid, or maybe a tumor, or maybe a hydatid cyst, or maybe a foreign body. This is a part of catheter during the angiogram or during the catheterization, arterial catheterization. Or even we have sometimes what we call it, uh, we have a fluke, hepatic fluke also maybe have inside the artery. So many types, many types of that embolus. Yeah, when you should be defined the embolus, no, don't mention only a thrombus or on the whole, this is a clot inside. You should be mentioning a foreign body circulating inside the vascular system. And when this foreign body circulating inside the system, it will be going to obstruct it, going to the periphery. Maybe go to, go to the cerebral artery, or maybe go to the renal artery, or go to the abdominal artery, yani, the intestinal type mesenteric artery, or maybe go to the upper limb, or maybe go to the lower limb. This is the embolus. This is the embolus, how it comes to lead complete obstruction, complete obstruction of the blood vessels, and it will be lead to the stop of the blood supply to the distal part of obstruction. Now, source of the embolus. The most important, it is in the left atrium either in case of the atrial fibrillation, 
or mitral stenosis or left atrial myxoma, if you remember it in cardiac surgery. Also an in artificial valve, especially in a prosthetic valve, not a biological one, biological one. This is maybe a part of it. And also commonly a mural thrombus following myocardial infarction, one third of cases it occur after MI, after MI have a thrombus or maybe have a neurismal of the left ventricle post MI complication or maybe lead to the cardiac arrhythmia and this is arrhythmia lead to showing of thrombi all part of the body. And this is also a paradoxical Paradoxical, a patient have DVT, and DVT it will be a bro, yani it will be coming to the circulation of the venous system, going to the inferior vena cava, through the inferior vena cava, go to the right atrium, right atrium. If have a ASD, 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 it will be go to the left, left side of the heart, and it will be distribution to the uh, arterial system. This is what we call paradoxical paradoxical type of umbolus. And also, and also we have a piece of atherosclerotic plaque, maybe cause an obstruction. And don't forget the most important beside that bacterial endocarditis. Also, it will be showing or thrown by. And also don't forget, I mean, a tumor, I, I mentioned tumor, especially in hypernephroma, 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 a patient have hypernephroma, renal problem, renal problem, maybe a part of a tumor going inside of that one, inside of that one. Now, an embolus. Now, we know the source of the embolus. Now, it's a, where, where it will be go, that one. What it will be lead to the ultimately the uh, result of that one, embolus will go to the cerebral circulation, blood vessels, lead to the cerebrovascular accident, or maybe transient ischemic attack, which is a small thrombi. Or maybe go to the retinal artery, read to the retina, what we call it in amaryosis of US, how they surrender the part of the vision. Yani half the vision, part of eye, yani in the nasal part or in the temporal part of the eye, he can see only in the medial side, and immediately not and laterally one, laterally one. This is what we have in the retinal artery. And also maybe it go to the mesenteric artery, lead to the either gangrene of the intestine or go to the sibleen, lead to the local pain enlargement of the sibleen and the function of the sibleen go to the kidney, it will be lead to the lung and vein, hematuria, and lead to the death of the kidney, or go to the lung, lead to the hemoptysis, shortness of breath, and even death, if it is a large embolus. Left lower, yani lower, lower ischemic, yani lower limb, lower limb ischemia, lower limb ischemia, lower limb ischemia. This is very important, you should be remembered in six Ps, six Ps. You should be remember it why it is a six piece, it is a start in the pain. Because a most vulnerable to the hypoxia, it is a nerve. And if you remember that, we have two types of the nerve, either sensory and motor. When it is affected, the sensory one, it have a pain. Second one have paresthesia. When affected the motor one, it will be lead to the paralysis. Paralysis. And because of absent, absent of the blood supply to the skin lead to the pallor, pallor, and even because of that one lead to the poikilothermia, mean there is a coldness, coldness of that one. Beside that, we have a pulse less because it will be absent of the distal pulse, distal pulse, it will be a pulse less. Pulse less. This is very important, you should be remember it, the size of the poly. Yani six Ps in the ischemic ischemic limb, ischemic limb, ischemic limb. The second important then, and muscle it will be affected, most vulnerable to the hypoxia after the nerve and the skin, the muscle. The lastly affected by the hypoxia it is a bone. 
acute occlusion to the umbilus, it will be different from atherosclerosis occlusion. يعني هنا أنا شنو الفرق بباتي بين atherosclerotic وال umbilus. The atherosclerotic it is a, a gradual occurring, gra gradual occurring, while the umbilus it is acute, acute, acute. That one gradual. That this one it is an acute acute attack acute attack it is affected of the umbilus about 70 percent of lower limb 13 percent of the upper limb 10 percent go to the cerebral circulation lead to the either tia or tva and five to ten percent to, to the mesenteric artery or renal artery involvement this is we see that in the picture in the picture, this is arterial occlusion. It is an emergency, an emergency, emergency case. You should be deal immediately in the upper limb, يعني not long, around six hours, and lower limb, not more than four hours. The umbilic of artery, it is require immediate diagnosis and immediate treatment. This is to remind you, to remind you, this is a paragraph to remind you the six P's. You should be remember it as you remember your name. Okay, always you should be remember this is six P's as you remember your name. A diagnosis always because it is a top emergent, top emergent. It should be depend on the clinical, clinical one. Clinical, and it, they no need to do an investigation that a routine investigation because this is it should be have a limited time to survive of the limb, an upper limb six hours, lower limb four hours. Who already when the patient come to the hospital, he is a delayed, delayed one, and should be immediately intervention with the a problem. Treatment when you catch it because you are a resident, not a specialist one. You should be give an heparin. Uh, 5,000 to 10,000 above those dose, and you should be give it 5,000, six hourly. The most important when you give an heparin, the best one you can give a 20,000 international unit by drip, by drip during 24 hours. This is by using micro drip, micro drip. This is, uh, this is the best one you do it in interval when you give a Heparin, a continuous one, a continuous one is more effective than you give it in the bolus dose only. And you should be doing an embolectomy or thrombectomy. And we, besides it, we can do an intraarterial thrombolysis. What is the ent an intraarterial thrombolysis? Like you can see tryptokinase, you should be given it immediately and you know, not catch in 48 hours. Or you can tissue plasma angiogram that you can give it a TBA. You can give it in the 24 hours in effusion, or you can give it a TBA in six hour plus spray. Yani it is either by infusion or by you give it by the yeah, pulse spray. Pulse spray manatin kulsisaat, 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 kulsisaat to tay. بينما إذا تطي هو continuous خلال أربعة وعشرين ساعة. It is more effective one. And contraindication to use of cytokines or TBI, a tissue plasminogen activator, TBA, tissue plasminogen activators. Contraindication when you have a recent stroke or bleeding diaphysis or in pregnancy. How we can do an embolectomy? This is you should be doing either in local anesthesia, local anesthesia, only to filtration of the area of the groin region and the explore of the femoral artery and you do an arteriotomy, arteriotomy, when you do an arteriotomy, you do inserted a Fogarty catheter. Fogarty catheter, the name you should be remember it as you remember your name, Fogarty catheter, Fogarty catheter. Fogarty catheter to use to يعني for embolectomy for embolectomy don't mix between Fogarty catheter and Foley's catheter Foley's catheter this is for the urine drainage use it in the bladder Fogarty catheter this is an embolectomy catheter embolectomy catheter Fogarty catheter 
الارتيريال ثرومبوسيس احنا قلنا ذاك يو شود بي مينشنت الارتيريال امبولس ناو الارتيريال ثرومبوسيس الارتيريال ثرومبوسيس ات از اكيوت اون كرونيك سبونتينيوس اكيوت ارتيريال occur on the most commonly in the prevalence of underlying stenosis due to the atherosclerotic disease. Yeah, and this is acute on chronic, not acute on acute. Vakajic normal healthy patient immediately developed of the ischemia. Normal healthy patient developed ischemia, immediately ischemia due to the umbolus, either from AF, from the MI, have no problem in the vascularity of the lower limb or in upper limb. Here in arterial thrombosis, there is an underlying arterial disease, atherosclerotic one, atherosclerotic. Means this is a chronic a chronic disease and due to the acute attack of the thrombus, it to the following. Why it occur? Why it occur arterial thrombosis, especially in hypoperfusion, it will be lead the critical reduction of the flow in the affected part, and maybe due to the aneurysmal one, this is due to the inadequate flow, especially in the abdominal aortic aneurysm, it will be showering of thrombi, showering the thrombi lead to the, what we call it, of the distal thrombi, what we call it blue toes syndrome. A blue toes syndrome. يعني إزرقاق الأصابع القدم. The hypercoagible status, like in the uh, antiphospholipid syndrome or protein C, protein S, or antithrombin 3 deficiency. Now, questions arise here. How I can differentiate this here between acute arterial thrombus from acute arterial? Umbolus. First of all, first of all, on examination, on examination, with examination, with examination, here with umbolus, you see a normal, healthy limb and affected immediately by, with the sign of ischemia. While in the thrombus, a thrombus, thrombus, we have a chronic arterial disease. When you have a chronic arterial disease, manata, there is a prolonged time of blood flow insufficiency. When you have low flow blood insufficiency, what it mean? It means it will be have muscle atrophy and have claudications يعني تسأل المريض يقول لك والله أنا كم شيء مسافة وتوقف رجليناتي تشنج تشنج رجليناتي فما أقدر أستطيع هذا what we call intermittent claudication and beside that beside that skin bandages it will be loss have loss of hair and a brittle skin a brittle nail a brittle nail a brittle nail and shiny skin with muscle atrophy. مصل اتروفاي شوف المريض يعني رجليناته العضلات مالته ما محله ماكو شعر بالرجلينات مالته غفر بتلوان بريتلوان شوف السكين مالته شايني بينما نوت ا هيلثي وان هذا لما يصير تشوفه كلينيكالي باباتي كلينيكالي يو شود بي ديفرنشيتد تقول ذيس از ان اكيوت اون كرونيك بينما الامبولس وي كول ات اكيوت اون اكيوت يا هيلثي لمب يعني شوف الهير ديستريبيوشن نورمال النيل نورمال مالته المسل تيز نورمال نو هيستوري اوف كلاودكيشن اميديتلي ديفلوبد اوف ذات وان ذس فيري امبورتنت وان ان ذا توب اوف ذس بيكتشر يو سي وات اي مينشن ناو وات وي كول ذا بلو توز سيندروم ذس از شوينج اوف ذا سمول ثروم باي سمول ثروم باي فروم ذا ابدومينال ايرت from abdominal aorta, and this is from the abdominal aorta going distally to the distal part of the artery. The distal part of the artery are the toes artery, and the toes artery, the toes, this is no need for immediate surgical intervention, because in the, we call it collateral circulation. Rabbil Alameen يخلق للإنسان قابلية أنه لم يكن عندك إنسداد يفتح لك collateral collateral around the site of obstruction this is it will be to the survival of the limb 
Probably we have acute thrombosis occur when we have this is yeah, not due to the atherosclerotic of the abdominal aorta. An upper limb, maybe have a cervical limb lead to that one, or maybe have a compression of the subclavian artery, maybe trauma, the trauma to the clavicle lead to the callus formation and occlusion of the subclavian artery lead. Or maybe occupational trauma, this is pneumatic to all how they the drill fatrata twile, fatrata twile, maybe have lead to the turbulence of blood flow, lead to the formation of the thrombus, or maybe during cardiac catheterization. This is be and it rarely occur and it can occur, can occur, but the most common is due to the atherosclerotic one. Clinical feature of that one have asymptomatic or have a limb threatening ischemia. And there's a wide range, wide range, from the mild to the limb critical ischemia. This is depending on the present or absent of adequate collateral circulation. The most important is collateral circulation and the size, size and location of involved visits. And you can see that the femoral artery يختلف عن البوبليتيال ارتري اذا بيكون عندك بالبوبليتيال ارتري يختلف عن البوسيريال تيبيال ارتري او تيليار تيبيال ارتري لما يكون اللارجر سايز المور افكت المور سيفير ات ويل بي انفولف بس قد ما يكون بارفرالي ديستالي بارت يكون ليس افكتد وان هاو يو كان تريت ذيس وان هنا Tupti heparinization. Now it should be a precaution not to do an embolectomy. With acute occlusion, acute occlusion to the embolus, you can't do, you can't do embolectomy. Here you should be postponed it. You should be do preoperative angiogram to see the site. Like any that you are any one acute or chronic disease to the atherosclerotic or I have a collateral that's why the embolectomy during my embolectomy before the catheter that's how the embolus to go we are in intima and when to the intima we are a shastly sedly collateral artery it will be the worsening of the limb and it will be ultimately lead to the gangrene so always always we do we do a preoperative angiogram to decide it, the size and site and collateral circulation. And beside, we do a decided of the surgery. Either we do a thrombectomy, not embolectomy, a thrombectomy, okay, and heparin, we give it. Another important subject we have a compartment syndrome. This is due to hematoma or edema in the fixed facial compartment of the calf especially anterior tibial compartment. If you remember the anatomy, you have three compartments. There shouldn't be the three compartments, but yeah, the three arteries. You've got the anterior tibial, posterior tibial, peroneal. The calves and the leg have three compartments, anterior, and the medial, lateral, and posterior. Medial, lateral, and posterior compartment. When it is an increase in pressure more than 25 centimeter of mercury, 25 centimeter of mercury, will show an increase in the pressure. If a specialist can you know, we transduce to the measurement of pressure, because yeah, the pressure is the pressure inside the compartment. If it is above, 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 above 25 centimeter of mercury, this is we call it compartment syndrome. You should be do immediately because if it is a compressed one, compressed one, compressed, you should be do immediately fasciotomy, fasciotomy. Because, because of this pressure lead to the occluded of the artery and lead to what we call it the crush syndrome. Crush syndrome means there is a myo, a myoglobulin, a myoglobulin because of the death and the myoglobin, it will be go to the circulation and lead to the renal impairment. Beside we have, beside we have acute, acute hypermetabolic acidosis. Acute hypermetabolic acidosis. You should be remember this. Hyperacute metabolic acidosis beside have a myoglobin, 
myoglobin E2, renal impairment, renal impairment. لذلك هنا السجن لما يكون المريض جايني أكثر من أربع ساعات، ست ساعات، ثمان ساعات، سجن مالتي، to revascularization or amputation. Revascularization or amputation depend on that one crest syndrome. أنا اليوم سويت لي revascularization رجعت الأرتري لكن ويا ما رجعت الأرتري رجع كل المايوجلوبين والأك Acute, acute and hypermetabolic acidosis may be due to the يعني, uh, renal impairment and renal failure and may be due to the death. So this decision always, always in the arterial disease, arterial disease, first of all, your policy, a life-saving, life-saving, second, if you can, survive the limp. The most important, your goal in treatment, it's a life-saving, life-saving before limb. If you can, limb-saving. First stop is life-saving. Second, if you can, limb-survive or limb-saving. So you should be doing urgent fasciotomy and fasciotomy two part, either open fasciotomy or closed fasciotomy on the three compartment you do it. This is the fasciotomy that you see. This is a compartment you see in medium and lateral and posterior compartment. You can see in the left part of the diagram and you can see the open fasciotomy, how we can do it. Only to open the fascia, open to the fascia. We can do only a small incision and by long scissor we cut the fascia or we can by open all fascia. This is to relieve the compartment syndrome. Now, another thing is we have mesenteric artery. Mesenteric artery occlusion, acute occlusion due to either thrombus or embolic. Now, let me zoom about the acute occlusion in that kind of thrombus or embolus. The thrombus shaikun. This is due to the atherosclerosis of the artery. This is a progressive narrowing of the symptoms and it will be progressive we have a weight loss abdominal pain leukocytosis it is a gradual one and this is abdominal pain we have it is post brandial and what am i going to do this and this and the severe abdominal pain we have a area or even hypovolemic and later on later on if it is not treated lead to the gangrene start while the embolic embolic of the centric artery. It is acute, acute occlusion to the source from the heart, from the heart, lead here to uh, acute, acute, not a gradual, acute severe abdominal pain, and it will be lead to the bowel empty, bowel empty, vomiting and diarrhea. Immediately have vomiting and diarrhea, vomiting and diarrhea. Uh, no, the source of the embolus always from the cardiac. Here you need angiogram, angiography, embolectomy, or bypass surgery. But in the embolus, you should be do embolectomy immediately to survive the bowel. And the thrombotic one, you do an angiogram and do embolectomy or bypass surgery to relieve this occlusion of mesenteric artery. This is how it will be appear. The gangrenous of the bowel, when there is an occlusion, occlusion, occlusion of superior mesenteric artery, and unfortunately, it's superior mesenteric artery, and it will be affected most of the small and part of the large bowel. Another embolus, it will be what we call the air embolus. The air embolus, it is an air circulating inside the blood vessels and the arterial blood vessels. This is maybe I accidentally injected in the venous circulation. Sometimes they said, how much of the air it will be kill the patient? Many, many uh, yani range. They said either it is a 5 cm of air to one, one, 100 cm of the, of the air. It will be kill, kill, kill the patient. This is an element, so like an IV injection, you should be evacuated from the air to يعني, prevent of this air embolus. Maybe during the artificial pneumothorax, we have a puncture of the pulmonary vein 
and lead to the arambolus, or maybe due to the sucked into an open wound in the neck or axillary artery. عادة التماثيل تشتغل على النيك على النيك على النيك artery. You should be make head down, head down. ليش تخلي head down؟ لأنه دائما the venous system, the venous system above the heart have a zero blood pressure. Zero blood pressure, zero. When you want to work on the neck, it should be on the vein of the neck. You should be do head down, head down, to prevent of any sucking of the air to the air envelopes. Also, it can occur in open heart surgery. If you remember, it should be deaerating of the uh, deaerating of the heart in the finishing of the open heart surgery, or sometimes in fallopian tube insufflation. Not in suffocation, in suffocation, this is an uh, incorrect writing. In suffocation, not in suffocation, please. Fallopian tube, in suffocation, in suffocation. This is a uh, wrong writing. In suffocation. This is and when we have an infertility due to the obstruction of fallopian tube, sometimes we can do injected of the air to open the fallopian tubes, or sometimes an illegal abortion lead to the air embolus. It will be go from the vein to the right atrium, to the right ventricle, and air locked of the pulmonary artery. And the right side heart failure happens. I mean, you can marry other than what you should be do. You should be put a patient in Trendenburg position and خلي head down, head down on the left side to sleep. They should خلي head down and his left. حتى يبقى الأير وين موجود بالأبيك of right ventricle. Epic of the right ventricle. Right ventricle. You can do an aspiration, go to the by needle, go to the right ventricle and to aspirate the air. And you should be supplied during that period by oxygen. This is how we can do it, the Trendenberg position, Babati. This is the position and how we can do an air inside the blood vessels. We do it. Now, in fat umbrellas also, it is a more common cause following severe injury with multiple, multiple, multiple fractures of the long bone, long bone, or maybe following of the ECT, this electroconvulsive therapy and treatment of the schizophrenic or in sometimes in deep depression we can do it, in mania also we can do it, in hypomania we can do it, in ECT. The fat may be from the bone marrow, or maybe from the adipose tissue, or maybe due to the metabolic and origin of chylothorax, yani chylomicrons, or aggregation of the chylomicrons. A clinical feature of that one may be occur in the day or after the injury immediately. Either it will be affected a cerebral or pulmonary, or both of them, when it is an Fat embolus affected of the cerebral artery, it leads to the drowsiness, restlessness, disorientation, and comatose. And when you examine the pupil, it will be small and the patient has pyroxia. <coughs> Sorry. Pulmonary one, the patient will have a short with cyanosis. El Shubilona Malta Lona Romadi, Marita Gilwich Malta. Have a right side heart failure. Have a white froth from the mouth and nose. شوف لك يا طلع لما تأخذ ال 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 السلايفة مالته أو السبيوتة مالته have a fat drop to confirm your diagnosis. I be affected the retina. A retina, a retina it will be have separated. It is our fluffy patch of the exudate. In the urine, you have, or in sebutum, have a container fat. And also, you have a petechial hemorrhage. And you will all the distribution in the body have a petechial hemorrhage. Treatment of that one in fat embolus, you should be very do and oxygen therapy, heparin, and you should be give a low molecular dextran. And you could be restricted other fat. This is the criteria of fat embolism, particular hemorrhage and retinal hemorrhage and cerebral. It will be affected all the part of the body. It will be the sign of the fat embolism.
The other umbrellas for one of them may be due to infective endocarditis, bacteria or a clot, or pyema. And pyema, this is especially when you have infected bile, infected bile, infected bile, it lead to the portal circulation, or infected infarction, or we have a parasitic emboli, like a teen echinococcus, sorry, we have the hydatysis, or embolic of the malignant, either we mention it in hypernephroma, and sometimes we do, we do embolization, this is a therapeutic one, therapeutic one, to arrest hemorrhage, especially from the GIT, we have a cervical varices, we can do it, or we in the, have a tumor of the bladder, we can do it, or we, in case of the hemoptysis, we can do embolization of the vascular of the pulmonary artery, or sometimes to treat it in AAV malformation, atrial arterial venous malformation. How we can do it? By either we use a gel form sponge, or sometimes we use a human dura, or maybe a plastic microsphere pallone, or ethyl alcohol, or a quick setting a plastic, or sometimes metallic or mechanical device made of the stainless steel or coil and wood. This is therapeutic under GA, maybe, example of bleeding ulcer, large gastric artery, left gastric artery, or gastrointestinal artery, bleeding hepatic tumor, hepatic artery, or renal tumor, renal artery, embolization, or also visual and varices, we do it. I hope it is not long for you, but this is because of